right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I've got a vapey thing that I wanted to talk to you about today, and, and it's going to be this. It's going to be just the, the, the ugliest setup that I've probably ever used, but I just find it so damned enjoyable. Right out of the gate, I want to say I really like this mod. I like using this mod, and I really like this tank. I love the coil heads inside this tank that just happens to be two of the single most ugly products that I've ever seen in my life, which is a real shame. And I know that this is one of those things that is just intensely subjective, but I think this is just the ugliest hunk of garbage ever. But in order to get to know both of these just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close, as we often do. That's right. Quick, short, uppy, closey time. Go. <clears throat> All right. Yeehaw. Well, we're going to be taking a look at this setup top to bottom. Don't worry. I'll be saving all of my aesthetic ugly remarks for later. We're going to take an objective look at this from top to bottom, starting off with the tank. Avatar Mesh Nano has adjustable AFC. It's real easy to adjust. It's nice and smooth and glidey. It doesn't click into place in any of the positions, but you can kind of leave it, adjust it where you want it and leave it there and it'll stay in place. And like I said, it's real nice and smooth, easy easy to adjust. Real simple, straightforward top fill system. This just unscrews to expose your two very large kidney shaped juice fill holes. And the drip tip is totally 810 compatible. So if you want to rock your favorite DHD tip, like my favorite DHD tip on this and make it somehow even more ugly, you can definitely do that. And really that's kind of all there is to it. This coil head is still going strong, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to clean it. We're going to replace the coil head real fast. Now there's going to be some juice spillage here, but the whole tank just kind of comes off like this. Really easy to take apart and very easy to clean. And you can see on the outside, it still looks like a fairly clean coil head. And when you look on the inside, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, if you ever look down at your coil head and you see something like that on the inside, it's definitely time to replace it. And since we're going to be filling this up with the same juice that was in it before, I'm not going to clean the full tank out and rinse everything off. I'm really just going to replace this coil head. Well, I mean, I'm going to replace this coil head and I'm going to get juice all over my fingers as well. So there's going to be a spare coil head in the packaging. It does come pretty cool packaged. I mean, this is a cool little like, uh, you know, tin type of situation comes with everything you need. There's a little instruction booklet, replacement glass and O-rings. And it does say on the website that the bubble glass option is available. The one that like, you know, gets wider and narrower, the bubble glass to maximize the capacity of it, but mine that mine wasn't included with the bubble glass, and I believe you have to buy them separately. Here's that coil head. Here's what we're after right here. Brand new, fresh coil head. This is the 0.15 ohm coil head that we're going to be installing. It says it's good for 40 to 90 watts. I generally rock these at about 60 in this particular tank. Just screw this down into the base. We're just going to juice up the inside of this coil head real fast. It doesn't take much. Just some, just some juice. Don't go crazy. Just put some juice in there. Your glass goes on. And then you take your rag and wipe up your entire life because now there's juice everywhere. I just get particularly messy when I'm filling up sub ohm tanks. This is 100% my fault right here. It doesn't have to be this messy of a process, I promise. And then bleh. Screw the top down, put on your drip tip, you're good to go. So now let's turn our attention to this Geek Vape Blade mod. Again, not going to say anything about aesthetics. We're just going to look at this mod. Big clicky button right here on the front. Real nice placement. Thumbing it perfectly. Thumbing it easy to hold in your hand. Hit it with your thumb. I also like to hold it like this with my thumb up the back. Hit it with my finger. And I actually also like to hold it like this and hit it with my thumb here. Regardless of how you hold it, it's a really nice, big, illuminated, very clicky, responsive button. Back door is just held on by four magnets. One, two, three, four. And then you have this extra long ribbon on the inside. And you can see right here the battery sled very clearly marked positive and negative. These are for 2700s or 21700s. If you want to run dual 18650s, you're going to need to include this little uh, adapter right here. So you got to thread it onto the ribbon. Top goes in first, 
bottom goes in second, and now you're all set up for 18650 mode. Again, it's real clearly marked, positive and negative. Those four magnets on the door hold it on real well. It snaps on with authority, and there is no play. Up, down, side to side at all. Fit and finish on this, surprisingly good. And the entire blade is plastic. The door's plastic, the body's plastic, the screen's plastic, the button's plastic, everything's plastic. Spring-loaded 510 connection is obviously, you know, not plastic. Five clicks powers it on the screen. It's nice. It's fine. There's, it's not, you know, revolutionary. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's not some bright, beautiful display, but it shows you what you need to know. Wattage, resistance, the amps you're using, the volts you're using, and how many puffs you have taken. Three clicks will activate the menu system and the up and down buttons become your navigation buttons and you can switch it back between, you know, uh, temperature control mode, custom TCRs, wattage mode. There's a parallel bypass mode in there as well. For me, I'm a wattage vapor, so I leave this just simply in wattage mode. Got that Avatar Mesh Nano tank back on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get back out to normal view and we are going to vape this hideous thing. It's just such a good vape. This mod, while ugly, feels nice in the hand. It's big, and I'm a normal sized guy with, I guess, normal sized hands, and it still feels a little bit bulky to me. I am a straight wattage vapor, and so this never leaves wattage mode. I, I just leave it there, and I love it. It's responsive, and like I said, it gives me plenty, plenty of power. I just absolutely cannot stand the way that this device looks. I'm not 100% sure even what they were going for. I don't know if it's supposed to look like a fancy acrylic mod or if they were trying to copy like stabilized wood type of look to it. I feel like this was Geek Vape just looking at the vape market going, oh, well, vapors like all sorts of crazy weird ass colors now. Let's just make this monstrosity. There's no real pattern or rhyme or reason. It just looks like a clown orgy and, and I can't stand it. They come in a color called Called Starry Night, which if you've seen the painting Starry Night, eh, maybe a little bit. Honestly, my biggest issue with this, apart from the fact that it's completely plastic, the whole mod is plastic, the door is plastic, the body of it is plastic, the sled on the inside, it's all plastic. Granted, it's a pretty thick, pretty rigid, durable plastic, but it's still plastic. And I don't wanna drop this with this tank on here because I really don't feel like breaking that glass, but here we go, let's see what happens. Ah, oh, God. Ah. Hey, look at that, the door didn't even come off. Yeah, it survived. It fell on the corner and the door did not come off. This door is on here securely. Fit and finish, great. My biggest, biggest gripe with this, other than it looks so ugly, and I'm gonna say that a lot about both of these products. They are both just, <laughs> just hideous, man. I can't stand it. And really, from a distance, you kind of go, well, that's not so bad, right? You look at it and you go, well, it's a bunch of swirly shit. Who cares? It's just a bunch of swirly shit, right? And then all you have to do is hold it about a foot from your face to see how horribly pixelated and blurry this graphic is on here. It's not sharp or vivid in any way. It's real blurry, it's real pixelated. It takes what could have been a very cool mod and makes it feel real cheap. I feel like they just picked the lowest resolution picture of swirly crap that they could find and then just blew it up and put it on here with no regards to resolution or artifacts or pixels or blurriness or anything. It's not pleasant for me to look at this device. And this Avatar Mesh Nano Tank, it vapes so well. The coil heads in here are just phenomenal. I think Vapeston did a great job. And what I really like about these coils is they last a really long time. And I think one of the reasons I've been able to make them last a really long time is that I rock them at a much lower wattage. You don't need a fuck ton of wattage with mesh coil heads. This is a point one three in here and I've only got it set to 60 watts. I do also turn down the airflow just a little bit because full open it, it's it's big it's it's a lot of airflow but it's also really loud. <sighs> Ugh. 
Again, I mean, huge clouds of vapor, you'll be exhaling a weather system and you'll be exhaling a very flavorful weather system. The mesh coil heads in here just deliver that great saturated flavor vape that I love so much. But I do find myself turning down the airflow about halfway and giving it a less intense sort of toot. The velocity at which you're inhaling just bring it down a little bit, just pump the brakes a little bit, just turn the airflow down a little bit, turn the wattage down a little bit, and then pump the brakes with how hard you're dragging on this. I much prefer this with a little bit more restricted of a lung hit. Oh, it's good. I love the vape I get from this tank. I love the vape that I get from this ugly, ugly tank. It, it just looks like a train wreck to me. I generally don't mind that kind of new honeycomb pattern trend that seems to be going on, but what Vapeston did is they wrapped it around the tank so that when you look at it from certain angles, the honeycomb gets all weird and, and stretchy and looks bad. It, it just, it just looks bad bad to me. I, I, I hate it. I hate the way this tank looks. I, I genuinely hate the way this whole setup looks, but it just vapes so well. The, the other colors of the tank are, are, are still kind of bad. They're not really awful. Some of the color combinations work together a little bit better, I think. There's a red one that doesn't look so bad, and there's, there's a black one with some gold in it that still doesn't look too bad. This tank would have been so much more appealing to me in just black. Could you imagine that? A tank that vapes this well is this easy to put together, to clean, to fill. Is 810 compatible? If this just came in black or like just stainless, or even if they wanted to stay with this acrylic and kept it to simple colors, that would be so much more appealing to me. It would just be much more appealing to me as a person. And I know, again, things like this are very subjective, right? So there's gonna be people out there that go, Grim, well, I don't I don't care. I, I, I like the purple in the ultimate and I like the way it looks. And that's cool. That's totally cool. More for you. I can't stand it, dude. But again, running the risk of repeating myself, which I I generally always do. It vapes so well. Just a nice, easy drag, and you get that warm, dense, saturated vapor. So let's talk about vape budget hands. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you want to buy either of these products? Looking around the internet, I found the Geek Vape Blade for anywhere from 65 to $70, so not, not crazy, not outrageous. $70 is a pretty banging deal for a dual, uh, you know, regulated, dual battery regulated box mod. As far as the Vapeston Mesh Nano Tank goes, you can find it around the internet. I found it for a few places. It's right around $40 for the tank, which I feel like even though it's it's hideous, and it is hideous, and I think it's super ugly, and I'm not sure if I stress that point enough, but, but it's super ugly. But $40 for this high quality of a vape, and I'm telling you, the coil heads in here are, are phenomenal. They are, they are just spanking, spanking? What? <laughs> they are just really banging good coil heads. I love them. I love the vape that I get from these coil heads. I like how long they last and I like that I don't have to rock them at, at a pro anything approaching like 70 or 80 watts. These are 50 to 60 watt ohm, six, 50 to 60 watt coil heads at the most. You'll get the most out of them at a little bit lower of a wattage. Now if we're going to play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have, I have no vape gear, is either of these. Are either of these something that I would personally seek out and buy? No. I mean, probably not. Maybe the tank, maybe the tank, with the caveat that they weren't in horribly ugly colors. And I might even, I might even go after this mod if it was just aesthetically different. If they did this completely differently, if this was like, I don't know, a gunmetal, aluminum type of thing, maybe do a, a leather or carbon fiber back shit. This could be aluminum and you could have like a stainless steel door on the back and it would make it feel much more like a, like a serious mod than something that looks 
like this. And I know, I know I'm getting caught up on the aesthetic, so I'll say this. These are ugly, and I've already said that, but I'm gonna say it again. These are ugly, but they both independently vape really well, and it's just a damn shame that they're so ugly. Of course, like I said, they're not gonna be ugly to everybody, so if this is your cup of tea, you're gonna get an amazing sub ohm tank that has one of the best vapes that I've ever had on it. Just, just beautiful coil heads on the inside. And you're gonna get a real versatile mod that's easy to hold and comfortable, can use a variety of batteries and gives me plenty of power. Unfortunately, they're going to look like this. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I got everybody. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna throw some links down in the description to where you can check these out if you're interested in them. If you're not adverse to really horrible colors, then these could be a pretty viable option as I've said already at least 8,000 times. I, I really like vaping on it. So anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, no matter what it looks like, let's keep on vaping.